Well, we're starting a little earlier today because uh, the Cabinet Minister doing the media round is Robert Jenrick. He's been a little bit delayed, but he is uh, uh, now able to join us. Thank you uh, for being uh, uh, with us, Mr. Uh, Jenrick. Um, I want to ask you, first of all, uh, briefly, I hope, about the whole Dominic Cummings affair. As we know, a lot of elected uh, Conservative MPs are listening to their constituents and saying that they're not satisfied with the explanations uh, given by Dominic Cummings and the Prime Minister. They do believe he broke the rules when many other people in similar difficult circumstances didn't, uh, and they think he should go. Why are they wrong? Why are they wrong? Well, uh, good morning, Adam. Dominic Cummings has given his detailed explanation to the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister asked him to uh, say that publicly on Monday to answer questions from the media, which he did for, for over an hour, answering every question. Look, sorry, I mean, could you answer him? my question, please? Minister, I'm, I'm asking you, I'm not asking about what he said. Well, 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 we know what he said. We carried it live here on Sky News. The point is, a lot of your colleagues, elected MPs, unlike Mr Cummings, don't think his answers are satisfactory. And I'm saying, why are they wrong? The Prime Minister, and uh, I agree with him, believe that he's acted reasonably and within the law. He obeyed the guidelines. I appreciate that many people across the country, including many of my colleagues in Parliament, believe that he made the wrong decisions, but he did behave within the guidelines. And so I believe, and I think the Prime Minister does as well, that we should now move forwards. And OK, well, a, lo a lot of people were fairly questioning about... Your, a lot of people were, fa were fairly questioning now. about your own behaviour. Uh, that also got the thumbs up uh, from the Prime Minister. So it does look a little bit as if uh, there's one law for you and uh, a different law for everyone else, and indeed a law uh, which uh, has been enforced on the rest of us. That's not, the, that's not the case. Nobody uh, is exceptional here. Everybody has to obey the same rules. And with respect to Dominic Cummings, he, he did obey the guidelines. The guidelines say yep. that if you have children, you should try to follow the rules to the very best of your ability. But they do allow you to use a degree of discretion. Right. Okay. So in you're, order you're to still in your job. We know Professor Ferguson is uh, not in his job. Uh, we know also that uh, Dr. Calderwood is not in her job. But you're in your job. Dominic Cummings is in his job. I do want to ask you about something in the Times today. It says, it seems extraordinary to me uh, that you've admitted that you showed apparent bias in unlawfully intervening to approve uh, a planning decision in favour of uh, Richard Desmond's uh, company uh, in uh, London uh, when the council and the inspector had ruled against it. So you admit you showed apparent bias towards a Tory donor. Well, I, it's not appropriate for me to get into individual planning applications. Obviously, as Housing Secretary, well, it is, it's, my it's a matter of record. You have admitted. But I can, uh, yeah, have I you admitted you, apparent bias in this we, case? And what does that mean? Well, well, I can assure you that we took this decision as we do all decisions on the merits. Uh, we absolutely refute any suggestion. Of bias, but we did. Well, take hang on, the hang on. Wait a minute. Either you've admitted apparent bias, as reported in the Times today, or you haven't. Have you admitted apparent bias? Apparent bias. No. We said that there there is no bias, but that because issues were raised, for absolute fairness, we would quash the decision and enable it to be retaken, if that's what the applicant wants, and that will be retaken, uh, as is the usual way, by a different minister. So that was done for complete fairness, um, and uh, the decision, if the applicant wishes to do so, can be retaken at a later stage. Well, the applicant, of course, is the person who benefits from this, so I don't think that's particularly meaningful. Uh, but this is being quoted. I just want to get this on the record. Have you admitted, officially, this is what the, the Times is saying, uh, that you showed, quotes, apparent bias in unlawfully intervening to approve this planning application. Well, the, the way that the court process works uh, is that if you want to retake the decision, 
then you have it quashed in the court. That's what, that's what we've done, and that enables it to be retaken if the applicant wishes that to be the case. We, we obviously don't believe that we acted uh, inappropriately or that we showed actual well, hang on, hang on. Look, uh, I'm just trying to establish we, the facts we did here. The, the Times is reporting, I've just read it out to you, that you have accepted that you showed apparent bias in unlawfully intervening to approve this application by Richard Desmond's company, a man who supports the Conservatives and has donated to the Conservatives. I'm just asking you, factually, in the legal process, have you admitted that you showed apparent bias? The legal process sets out that um, the, the way the decision was taken could give rise to the appearance of bias, but obviously we reject that there was any actual bias, and that's why, for complete fairness, uh, the department decided that the decision could be retaken by a different minister, uh, and that may well happen if the applicant wishes to do so in the future. Because, of course, the reason why the inspector and the council were against it was because there wasn't enough social housing, enough housing for poor people. Well, I, I hope you'll respect this. It's not appropriate for me to get into the details of individual well, you're the bloke who takes the decision. You've yeah. taken a decision in this case, so I think it is appropriate. Well, if I can so just I explain, it, it, it is true that the government is keen to get more homes built, and there's a consistent record by this government yeah. and indeed by me as Secretary of State that we've tried to ensure that homes get built, particularly in London, where yeah. uh, development has been too slow in recent years. So we have yeah, but supported development. The local development, council said there weren't enough affordable homes, social houses, for the people who need them. There may have been apartments for rich people who live abroad, uh, and that may help Mr. Richmond, uh, Mr. Desmond's company. But the issue is, this is a typical example of a scheme in London where the authorities said there weren't enough social houses and you have intervened to approve it. That's the circumstance, isn't it? Uh, well, that isn't, that isn't quite right. It's obviously, it, it is more complicated than that. But it is correct that we judged that the benefit of more homes outweighed some of the other concerns with the project. Yeah, this is more is expensive homes, though. Policy. Fewer, fewer want cheaper homes, homes and more, yeah, more homes expensive more homes. homes across the country. Well, we want to get more homes of all kinds built, obviously in the right places, and you judge each application on its own merits, but we want to get more homes built of all kinds. We're doing that in a number of different ways, supporting developments, but also investing in affordable housing as well, and we're bringing forward the largest ever affordable homes programme, for example, right. which was announced at the budget that will enable right. us to build thousands more homes uh, which are available to people on low incomes. Yeah. We're also bringing forward yeah. our yeah. signature home ownership policy, First Homes, that will give a 30% discount yeah. to first-time buyers and to key workers like nurses and care workers to get their first step on the housing okay. ladder. Well, I, well, I want to move and on and talk about the homeless, but just one, one final question on this issue. With hindsight, do you accept that uh, you were wrong to intervene and you shouldn't have approved this development? Well, we judged it on the merits, and that was done uh, without any actual bias. But clearly, the way that the process was run uh, gave rise to some concerns. And so that's why we've chosen uh, to quash the decision by agreement with the other parties and to have it redetermined. I think that's the fairest way to proceed now.